I'm Angie Carpenter, Town of Isaac Supervisor, and I'm joined today by Ruth Hennessy, who is the president of Good Samaritan Hospital, a member of Catholic Health Services, and Steve Castleton, who's a civilian aide to the Secretary of the Armory, who has led a life filled with meaningful and interesting work supporting veterans groups and other Long Island charities, and he's here to recognize the wonderful people that are doing this testing for us here in, this, in the tent. Back in November, actually November 18th, we kicked it off. We partnered with Good Samaritan Hospital and the ISLIP CDA, which provided the funding to open the COVID-19 test site right here in Brentwood, which has been an absolute hotbed of activity here, um, COVID activity, unfortunately. At that time, we saw positivity rates hovering around 10%. Today, we're seeing a positivity rate of 15.1 percent so what we have been saying all along and what we have been trying to communicate to the officials at state level at the county level that this community i mean you open up newsday every day i go right to look at brentwood and ci and see the numbers and they're consistently going up when i did the calculations the other day 25 percent of the entire number of cases in the entire county of Suffolk are in this very hamlet of Brentwood. So it was so important that we get this testing site up. And I want to acknowledge Justin Jason, who kind of took the ball and ran with it uh, when I first asked if it was possible to do this. And it literally happened within a matter of days. Again, getting that funding from the CDA was crucial. The response to these percentages is, is enforcing or reinforcing our effort to continue this testing. We must continue to test to help identify the positive results. Contact tracing is key to identifying other positive cases connected to that person. The early, earlier we identify a positive case, the earlier people can quarantine so that they don't spread COVID within the community. If you receive a call from a contact tracer, please heed their advice quarantine and, and be, be free with answering their questions. We must continue to educate people in and around the community. We're calling on the community to continue to follow the protocols. It is so simple. It, these are the guidelines set forth by the health department, the state, the county, and of course the CDC. Wear a face covering, maintain that social distance, and keep good hand hygiene. I have gloves on now, my hands are raw from the, I wash, I sanitize, I wash, and it does take its toll, but you've gotta stay um, free from COVID. I'd like to, at this time, introduce Ruth Hennessy, who has just been an incredible partner in so many initiatives that we try to do uh, with addressing the health needs of our community, and that is Ruth Hennessy, the president of Good Samaritan Hospital. Ruth? Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Um, it's my pleasure to be here today uh, with the town of Islip and with Mr. Uh, Steve Castleton. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking all the dedicated staff from Good Samaritan Hospital who have been staffing this tent since uh, November. And I believe we're scheduled out through February uh, at this point. Um, we run the testing center three days a week from one to five and it's by appointment only. And not only serves as a wonderful opportunity to be able to test folks, but to also be able to do some education as well. Um, with this horrible disease, we know that education is so very important to frequent testing and, and hopefully vaccination um, at some point that uh, we get that. So um, I'm very uh, happy to be here. I'd like to thank Mr. Castle, Steve, for this recognition. Um, it's, it's incredible, it's very important to us and our mission to help serve uh, the community. And I'd like to thank the town of Islip and Super Supervisor Carpenter. And when I, I think about Supervisor Carpenter, I think about someone who always has a solution. There's never a problem, there's only solutions. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't know about that always with the solutions, but, but I thank you for that. But we really do try. I can't stand to hear someone say, oh, we can't do that. It's like, okay, let's see if we can find a way to make it happen, because generally you can. And I do want to acknowledge the officer from the Suffolk County Police Department. You know, we really, the, the county has been a partner too. 
Um, we have the briefing calls with them and everything. So, uh, and public safety is so important and you guys are out there on the forefront. So I, I do want to recognize you and your efforts and everyone from the department. And I know uh, Lieutenant uh, Zile just passed from COVID, a member of the department for over 30 years. So that truly is, is a loss. I know the chief of department, Stu Cameron, was in the academy with him. So it's, it's a particular personal loss for him too. And you know, it's not going away and, and we're hearing reports of an, other strains coming. So we can't let our guard down. I, that's the message that's gotta get out there. We can't let our guard down. Vaccine on the horizon, great. It started not as fast as we would like. Uh, but in the meantime, there are other strains surfacing, so uh, stay vigilant. Um, I would like to uh, ask um, Steve if you would like to say a few words and explain a little bit about the coin that you're going to be giving to the staff here. Before I start talking about the COVID testing, something's much more important and much more personal. If you're not feeling well, if you're sick, if you have high blood pressure, if you have heart conditions, don't make the same stupid mistake I did. I wasn't feeling well for a couple months. I didn't go to the doctor. It got to a point where I woke up one morning, collapsed. I couldn't use my leg whatsoever. Got rushed to the hospital and to keep a long story short, spent 28 days in the hospital because I didn't listen to my body and go to the doctor earlier. It was so bad when, when I got out of the hospital, I couldn't even do 10 pounds on a leg press machine. Now, thanks to Good Sam Rehab, I'm now doing 30 reps of 230. But the point is, you know what? If you have high blood pressure, if you have a pre-existing condition, listen to your body, listen to your family, go get checked. Don't make the same dumb, stubborn, stubborn Brooklyn guy mistake that I did. Don't do it. Anyway, as far as the testing goes, testing centers like this are saving people's lives not just the person who might be negative or positive, but your neighbors, your relatives. But the unsung people, the unsung heroes who are here, they are not the only ones on the front lines. They are on the front lines in the battle against COVID, in this war. There's a lot of battles. Some of the battles we're gonna lose because all too many people died already. But you know what? Thanks to the testing, thanks to the doctors, we're gonna win. But what's really important to me is not just the people who are here during the t doing the testing. They're going home worried about their friends, worried about their relatives, worry about if they're gonna infect them. They're coming here every day outside in the cold, in the rain, in the snow that we had a little bit before. And they're saving people's lives, not just people they know, total strangers who they might never see again. People need to go out and trust their body and get tested because you have no symptoms doesn't mean you have you don't have COVID go and get tested because the life you save could be your relatives could be your neighbors could be a perfect stranger could be somebody who finds the cure for cancer could be the person who's the next president of the United States in 20 30 years could be the person that finally gives the Mets a good batting order where they don't lose all their games anymore you know could be something like that but Getting back to the reason I'm here. In the military, back in uh, Vietnam War, they started challenge coins. Special Forces started that. And the whole purpose of a challenge coin, it's like a medal. When you receive a challenge coin, it's because you did something exceptional. It could be something where you saved somebody's life, where you saved a bunch of people's lives. So that's why I wanted to come here today. I called up Angie, and I wanted to present them all with one of my challenge coins. Again, a challenge coin is in the military, when you get one, it's something you save, something you keep on it. And when I was in the hospital during those first 10 days, there was somebody who got me up out of bed to go to the bathroom, keep me from losing my mind. And it was tough, and people forget about people like that. Donna, come here. Come on, Donna. <laughs> Donna Rogers, who I've known for 20 years, happened to be my nurse when I was at Good Sam. When I got there, I couldn't walk. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't do anything at all. And again, goes back to I should have listened to my body and went to the doctor two, to, uh, two months sooner. I should have. And I want to give her this coin. On the front of it has the seal of the Secretary of the Army. And the back of it, as you know by my accent, 
I'm from Brooklyn, has the Brooklyn Bridge, and it says duty on a country. And you know what? That's what the nurses are doing. They're there, no matter what's going on, no matter how sick somebody is, no matter how worried about their patients, no matter how worried they are with their family, they're coming in and they're making a difference. And all the work that I'm now able to do, the running around that I'm doing again with the testing sites and delivering PPEs, if it wasn't for all the nurses and especially Donna, I wouldn't be here to do it. This is for you. Thank you, Steve. Right. <laughs> Thank, you, ahead, Steve. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, you know, in addition to delivering that message about being vigilant about COVID and everything we have to do to follow the protocols, Steve brings up a very, very good point. You still have to maintain your health care. You still, don't be afraid to go to the hospital. It is safe, it truly, truly is. And don't be afraid to go to the doctor's office. They all have protocols, they're taking temperatures, they're meeting people in the car. They've got it, it's all together. So don't ignore it, you know. If you do, what could be a simple fix could wind up being disastrous later on. So thank you for sharing that. And uh, if there are any questions, I would be happy to entertain them. I'm sure, I'm sure Ruth would too. Uh, the one other thing I want to mention is that we're watching this steady stream of cars coming by and it's orderly because of the appointment system. Since the tent opened, we have done over 1,100 people have been tested. So that is really, truly remarkable. So I can't thank Good Sam enough um, for the leadership for believing in the need for this. It certainly is necessary and would ask those in the state and the county to do whatever they can to focus many more efforts here on the hamlet of Brentwood. So with that, everyone please stay safe.